Hello again, and welcome back to A Few Shots. Now, normally, we take a few shots uh, while we take a few shots at political figures and whatnot, but the left already did that, and they missed. Did they not? They sure as heck missed. (laughs) President Donald Trump, I mean... Let's fight. Yes, we're going we're gonna to fight along with you, sir. We, we, uh, we were able to find a video that could get the, the most current information to you guys on what happened on Saturday uh, uh, with, I guess I would say it's the mo- one of the most accurate. Uh, it gets it within, within two minutes for you guys. So we can get you the guys' information so that you know exactly what happened uh, without any outside misinformation or whatever else is going on out there. We want you, want you guys to have the news. We want you to have what really happened Without any lies. Without any lies. I mean, we definitely want way more accuracy than both the shooter and mainstream media. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I could not keep a straight face, Alan. That was that was that was good. <laughs> so we're we're gonna go ahead and watch this Wall Street Journal video. Credit to them uh, for making this. Yeah, you guys are gonna join us on the journey. <laughs> Gunfire erupted at a campaign rally for former President Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, Saturday. Trump said a bullet struck him in the ear. Here's how the attack unfolded. President Trump was speaking from a stage located here, with Secret Service snipers in position on the roof of a building behind the stage. The suspected gunman was on the roof of another building less than 450 feet away from where Trump was speaking, with a clear line of sight. I have to. I, I'm. A, I might have to pause it right there. Yeah. So, there. um, I, I I have questions. I I I know that you have them too. I have uh, a ton of them. Clear line of sight. Uh, it was a former president. Even if he wasn't a former president, he's a presidential candidate. All I know is we're in a much larger city than that little area right there, and I can tell you whenever anyone comes here, any kind of government official comes here to speak. When Trump was here and several other people come in to speak and it's going to be outdoors. I, it doesn't even have to be outdoors. Even when it's indoor. There's more security when a local rapper shows up. <laughs> right. Secret service, local police, all of those different people come together and they have people on every rooftop. They don't have them stationed on one rooftop trying to stare at the other rooftops. They put people on every single rooftop. So it's insane that just the simple fact that this guy even made it to a rooftop uncontended where there wasn't already somebody covering. It, and how do they have just the one gunman? Now, forgive me, but I see, I see a map there. It uh, looks like uh, off the other direction, less than 450 feet away is another building. And then another building is about the same distance as, as the, where the, the shooter was. Neither one of those show on the map, a secret service member being on top of those. So that, that secret service member is only looking at one direction. Where is he getting his intel as far as where to, where to aim if he needs to? Yeah, a handful of snipers. And then, there, of course, there's one little building that's actually a little closer. to the It's kind of the bottom left-hand side there. Yeah. A couple of buildings right there where there's nothing as well. I mean, there's just too much. There's so little to cover that's just not being covered. It's insane. Even from a perspective of not looking at other rooftops, you need people up there as surveillance for crowd control. Or for anyone outside of that crowd that you're watching, these people are getting a lot closer to the president than most people would be comfortable. If you're if you're in a protection field, if that is your job, these people should be not only looking on rooftops, obviously, or in windows for that matter. I mean, we've definitely seen some shots from windows and things. I, how did he get on the roof? I mean, how did he how did he get access? That's the whole question that I have. Without being stopped, because I know if I seen somebody, with gun or not, if I seen if I seen somebody getting up trying to get up on a roof, and and I happened to be there, I would have stopped him. I I would I would have would have first questioned him, what do you think you're doing? Make sure he's not law enforcement because sometimes they wear plain clothing like us. He could have right. flashed a badge and corrected me. But if not, I'm gonna yank him down. He can he can try to shoot, but I guarantee you I'm gonna get to him. Um, you know, especially, you know, I just, I really don't know. I saw a sniper, several snipers have come out and talked about this and I'm happy to get those perspectives. But one sniper said that that shot is a regular shot for a sniper to take. 
And with their training, they can very, very accurately hit a half dollar coin at that range. It's, it's nothing for them to hit that. Granted, as a 20-year-old dude, not military. I mean, he's probably only trained wherever he had a chance to. Um, but still, I mean, the simple fact remains that he should have never been in that position in the first place. Uh, within at least three, four, or five blocks of that place should have been completely locked off with enough security to to manage it. Well, and uh, with those with those glasses, he should have been able to see even closer. You think? <laughs> um, now they're shattered. But um, I'll tell you this, Alan. Just I haven't had any formal training for with rifles, but uh, I did, did hang out with rifle team in high school. I did shoot the, the, the smaller caliber rifles. I've, I've shot a 30 out six before, not, not during rifle team, but, um, it do, doesn't take much training to really get accurate with, with weapons like that. If, if you're able to get a line of sight and you understand this much physics, like how the, how the wind direction involves and gets involved and things like that. You, and in that short of a distance, you're, you're not having to do a whole lot of correction. No, not for wind, not for dropping. No, it's not. He did, he, what he didn't take into account is that Trump regularly, he talks like this and he turns his head. So much. And so that's what saved Trump's life. It really was. Uh, it's been established uh, over and over again. There's actually several videos and pictures out there showing how him turning his head and doing his normal little head tilt that he does before he gets emphatic on words. <laughs> that's what saved his life. That's what kept him from losing well, and, brain I mean, matter. Do we know why he turned his head? We do. It's because we care about being accurate and we follow a guy who cares about being accurate. So he was actually looking over at statistics and that's what made him turn his head. He decided he wants to be right. He wants to be precise. So he's looking over at a screen that was giving him the statistics from his team so that he could be accurate. And again, his accuracy was offset how inaccurate <laughs> Uh, that shooter was. And so certainly that's so great. I'm so thankful that he, he had a, he had to look over. I'm happy he had to look over. And there's plenty of video proof of him turning towards, there's a large chart, you know, at, at the rallies, if you've ever seen one, there are large screens that tend to be either two or one usually. And Trump will even without, he sometimes he don't look at the teleprompter. He'll look right at the big screen and he uses that for his references. And that's where he happened to be looking at the time. And he was also doing his little bit of a head tilt while he did it. And it was just enough angle saved I mean, his life. You know, and I just think about it. Like you look at CNN, you look at all these other places, look at some of the podcasters and, and YouTubers that are on the other side of the aisle. They talk about, Oh, it's just an ear. I mean, anybody take your ear. I mean, just put your finger between your ear and your actual skull. I mean, it's insane how close that was. It's insane how close that was. They want to act like, oh, well, he, he just got grazed. It's just an ear. It's no big deal. No, it's not like he got grazed on a finger. No, this is an attempt on his life. And don't don't let them fool you. We know that Biden didn't say in his address towards the nation uh, that anything about it being an attempt on Trump's life. Not once. I watched the entire eight and a half minutes. Not once did Biden say anything about an assassination attempt. Oh, they refused to use that word. They refused to use the word assassination. But Donald Trump 2024. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's see what we got in the rest of this. And look what happened to our country. Moments before so the shooting, we can hear see. nearby spectators saying they see right someone there, with a gun. He's going down! At the same time, while Trump speaks, the Secret Service snipers can be seen facing the gunman's direction. The only. We Secret see the Service agent agents. on the roof pick his head up just before shots ring out at 6.15. Secret Service agents rush to pull Trump to the ground. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe that, man. And it's so crazy that you have somebody in your sight. You have all in two minutes. There's so many videos out there show that it was it was over two minutes that they were being told. And and you see the, the some of the um, eyewitness accounts are saying you see, you know, FBI moving around, you see the police moving around, you see them looking but they're not doing anything. They're not even taking Trump off the stage. I mean, that should yeah. have been the very first thing they did. I'm not going to say it's planned. I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying 
it's really weird. Yeah, I mean, okay. at the end of the day, I I only blame people who do the wrong thing. And right now, we only know of one person who legitimately did the wrong thing, and he's not with us anymore. So, and then apparently, every everybody else there was just fiddling with their thumbs. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what they were doing. But, um, yeah, it, it just it just everything's boggling my mind. And I have a lot of questions. Is all I'm saying. A lot of questions. God bless that man. He could have cowered, he could have crouched, he could have stayed hidden. As they rush him from the stage, blood can be seen on the bleachers behind where Trump was speaking. A spectator was killed and two more were critically injured at the event. The suspected gunman, 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks, was shot and killed. Mm. I mean, that's those are the facts. That's what they could, well, you know, up to that point, definitely anything they could come up with. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you can you can take whatever Alan and I say or opinions or whatever with a grain of salt if you like. But we're just asking some some questions, and I, I think that that's fair. It's and 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 <laughs> people will come after you for asking questions, but why why can't we ask questions? I mean, really. Uh, Crooks. Let's see. Crooks had zero identification on him. They said they had to wait for basically, you know. Uh, like blood testing and things like that to come back to try to figure out who he was. But then the person has or had no social media presence. Um, his phone was locked so well that they couldn't crack it. Uh, you know, again, not trying to say this was set up or this was something that came down from any other office or, or anything like that. I'm just saying like this all seems very suspicious. Raises a lot of questions. Not only that, but uh, Crooks, who was a crook, he was in a BlackRock video advertisement. He's prominently featured a couple different times as as a, as a student in the in the video. <sighs> More questions. I love I love the attack of. Well, I mean, I don't know why you're so upset. It's it's one of your own that shot him. I mean, he he did go ahead and register as a Republican. Well, I mean, I can register as anything. That's just for polling, really. You know, it, yeah. I can register as a Democrat, but then as soon as I get in the box, I can vote however I want to vote. Doesn't really matter. Well, and in, in, in Indiana, you just you just register to vote, but in a lot of states, you have to register as one party or the other. And when you go to the when when you go down to the the poll, they will at, or go down for primaries rather. They will ask you, are you in fact the party that you're coming to? Uh, vote for because sometimes there's only Republicans that are running in that race. Sometimes there's only Democrats running in that primary race. Um, but they, they'll ask you what party because you can't you can't just say necessarily independent if there's no independents on that ticket. They they will say okay well you'll have to come back during actual elections because there's no one for you to vote for. They will not hand you a ballot. Um, but it, you can say whatever party you want to say. Uh, in the state of Indiana, and then I, I don't know how it works in other states. I assume, but I, I, I know a lot. Of, a lot of states actually make you register as one party or the other, and then, but you can just, like you said, say you're registered as whatever party, so that you can try to sway that primary Skew vote. Those numbers, because you know one of the biggest problems with uh, a lot of complaints, uh, kind of a stereotype with Repub Republicans, is that we become complacent, and once we see that the numbers are in our favor. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say this, but I mean, I mean, I'm gonna say it. But I don't mean to drag anyone. But uh, our age group is a busy age group, right? I mean, we're not talking about young people with nothing to do here, who just feel like they have to be an activist. We're talking about older people, on average, are, are we're, we're looking at and we're busy. So hey, we're up thirty points in the poll. Well, I'm gonna stay at work today. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna make that trip down there. Hey, I'm busy don't do that. This or that to do. No, don't because how many people on the other side are going to register as a Republican just to make you become complacent. And then they're just going to take it. They're going to, they're going to subvert the system and they're going to take your comfort and turn it against you. So, and that's what could have very well happened here as we've seen. If this person is who the person's supposed to be, they're a registered Republican who gave money to the Democrats when they were I don't know, three years ago, when they were a teenager, um, unless they had some kind of amazing jump in their brain from 17 to 20 and then 
a really horrible downfall afterward. <laughs> and if there was ever a reason to get out and vote, this November is a reason. That what happened on Saturday on the 13th. That is the reason you get out and vote. Don't be complacent. Don't say, oh, we're up. Don't don't look at polls. When Donald Trump said, make it too big to rig, you have to do it. And and nothing should make you want to do that more than the that event. Nothing. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. Tell your boss, I'm going to be late or I'm leaving early or I'm going out on a long lunch. And they're just going to have to deal with it because this is the most important election this country has faced in its history. I truly believe that. If if you don't get out and vote, you're part of the problem. If you don't get out and vote, it's it's very likely that you're handing over the country to its destruction, to its end. And I'm going to use a, a Joe Biden quote on that. No joke. Yeah, I mean, literally. I mean, they're willing to do this now, and this is the power that they have. Wait until they have more. Wait until there's more for them to lose. You know, once they establish a foothold, and I'm not saying, I'm not going to throw around the, the rhetoric of the left and say, they'll never leave office, okay? What I'm saying is, they're so good at driving their followers into things like this, and something that we have seen right here. I mean, they can't take loss. They can't. They absolutely can't. And the longer that, the longer that persists, the, the tighter of a grip they get on their own base. And then what happens when they do have a chance to lose again? You know, I mean, I, I hate to speak in what ifs. I don't like it. I like holding people accountable for what they do. I'm just saying a lot of people on the left, and I know this is a stereotype and it's probably not very nice. But a lot of them, you're, took, you're, you're talking a bunch of groups of people that honestly have true, deep psychological issues. And it's not because of the way they vote. I'm just saying no. that just happens to be the people with those. The issues, demographic just happens to lean that way. To lean that way, unfortunately. And, you know, a lot of that's government program based. You know, if I have these issues, the government's helping me out. Therefore, I'm going to keep helping myself by voting that kind of government back in place to keep me, to keep me situated the way yeah. I need to be. And I can't blame someone for that. But when things don't go right, we have things like this. And there's extremism on both sides. Okay. I am a libertarian. I do lean right. But there is extremism on both sides. I just think the extremists on one side are a little more brutal and a little more ridiculous than the other side. Hey, well, well, well actually, let me let me add one more real, real quick thing. Get on that soapbox, Josh. <laughs> one more real quick thing. If you believe that the left isn't celebrating the fact that Trump almost died, if you believe that they're actually upset that it wasn't successful, that they're not putting out, spend 10 minutes on, on, on TikTok. I'll tell you right now, it's, it's going to show you people are, pe the, pe there are people out there that are that awful. They're, I'm, I'm going to say evil. They're that evil. Absolutely. If you want to celebrate someone's death like that, or even potential death like that, and, and say, oh, it's too bad they missed. That's what they say in a lot of these videos. They say it's too bad they missed. Why didn't we send someone more accurate? They're screaming. They're crying. Celebrities are doing this too. No surprise there. They are, in fact, dumb. <laughs> yeah, they spend their whole lives pretending to be somebody else, so I don't trust them when they try to be themselves. That's a very, really great line. I'm, I'm going to steal that, Alan. I'm going to steal that, uh, like, like Joe Biden stole the 2020 election. <laughs> and so uh, and now that, I think, is a really good place to close it up. All right. Well, make sure you like, subscribe if you haven't already. Share, 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 share. Uh, drop some comments. Let us know what you think. I mean, we want to make sure we're crafting videos uh, that you want to see and uh, with information. I mean, we'll dig deeper if we have to. But right now, it's all kind of surface level. We, we just want to get the info out so you guys can make up your own minds. And we're going to keep more content coming to you uh, so that you guys can get uh, up to date on the most current uh, water cooler talk and <laughs> also uh, just what's going on out there uh, both, both on the federal level and, and as much local information as we can give you uh, when it comes to us go to info at revolverbroadcasting.com to contact us uh, uh, 
uh, with our e- that's our email. <laughs> and if you uh, want to just check out other videos, go to revolverbroadcasting.com. We'll see you next time. We'll see you then. Be safe. So just remember that. Never stop fighting for what you believe in and for the people who care about you. Carry yourself with dignity and pride. Demand the best from yourself and be totally unafraid to challenge.